So how are your summers going? <laughs> yeah. Good. Good, yeah. What all's happened? What's going oh, on? Oh man, Vivis? we've had um Yeah, it's just been wild. I've you know, every summer is I feel like every summer is like this, but this one, I don't know. Maybe it's just because we have the two young kids. Maybe it's because we have the baby on the way, which I think you guys now know, and it's common knowledge. We didn't like put it on Facebook or anything, but it is a boy. His name is going to be Philip James. Yeah. We're very excited, anticipating his arrival at the end of October. So End of October. But there's so much stuff. Like we're working on some house projects right now, you know, getting the, getting the ready for him. Maddie and Peter are going to share a room for a little bit. We're redoing what's going to be their room. We're trying to finish the basement. We're... And, you know, it got all the stuff going on for work. Like we just had the date night recently. Yeah. <laughs> Last Friday. How'd that go? <laughs> it was good. Um, and we had 77 kids and um, it was uh, it was awesome. We had, uh, I, <laughs> I was about to give you the breakdown of each, how many kids we had of each. We don't need to do that here. But the <laughs> there, there was a lot and it was yeah. really good. Um, and yeah. we know it was good because when the parents came back to pick up their kids, there were some of the kids like, it's not 8.30, you need to take a hike. I am still having fun. So yeah. that's it's good when, you know, when the kids are enjoying themselves. Well, I did come at 8.30. My kids still told me that. <laughs> They're like, get out of here. They're like, we're not leaving yet. <laughs> <laughs> I would yeah. say I, we, we participated, and it was nice being later in the year because it mm -hmm. wasn't cold. So You could do, some, you could do walked, something outside. And it was still light. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It wasn't dark yet. So mm -hmm. pretty much everybody went to Cracker Park. That's what it sounded like. We saw... Everyone there. <laughs> so we walked Contractually down, obligated to go to Crocker Park. Five minute chit chats up and down the boulevard. In the no. bullpen, as it were. But it was kind of nice. Not, yeah, not being, uh, not being, because it's usually Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. It's usually a little bit colder. Mm -hmm. It's already dark. It gets mm -hmm. dark early. So, yeah, enjoyed it. But I mean, it's one of those things where it's just so, it's, it's low key enough. It's low prep enough that it's something that we can do fairly easily, and it's not one of our more expensive events. So I mean, who knows? Maybe so this Friday. Maybe we do another one. Maybe twice a year. <laughs> I think it was your wife we were was talking to Cheryl like it here, and she's like, I mean, maybe once a quarter or like. And yeah. Mark said next week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> once a week. Uh, let's just get in a rhythm. Yeah, we'll just, just every <laughs> week date night. Yeah, there we go. That would be a little bit tough for me and my wife. But, <laughs> but you guys could view it as as your date, you know. <laughs> I mean, Marissa, such she's such a good sport, and she she does love to serve, and she was she was happy that that was something that she could come and serve at, and yeah. the kids could, the kids came and they were here too, and so we were all kind of in different places, but but Peter had a great time, Maddie had a great time. It was just it was fun. It was, it's always fun. When we do have the date night next week, Mark can be in charge of this part at the church. <laughs> and then you, oh, can, yeah. you can go. Yeah, great. The podcast part? Oh. No, of no the, the date night. Of the, the, the uh, administration children. part. Yeah. We'll pull, pull someone else from the bullpen. <laughs> Edwin? No, no. Zach and Chad come from the bullpen. Yeah. This is what I call that their office because mm -hmm. they, they share... An office space. We do. There's We're actually rowdy four. Boys. There's four. There's four desks in this <laughs> office, and so I refer to it as the bullpen. Why do you? Because he thinks it's because we're rowdy. Apparently, what do you think? It's like a. a well, I don't know. It's just it's where I go when I need something. Yeah, when you need a relief. Like picture. I go when I go and find. <laughs> I need I need a question answered. I go. I, it's one of you guys, and the one the one I'm looking for is never there. <laughs> oh yeah I no that's this has happened a lot actually i don't know where you guys actually work i know where your desks are yeah i work on the roof predominantly that's i was gonna say it's zach zach's gone <laughs> he's on the Chad's roof. just working out around the building <laughs> <laughs> oh we're gonna bring it back doing his burpees <laughs> so it so we were talking about the bullpen a little bit You're and it does the origin yes oh it bothers me every time yeah. every time this happens on the podcast and you guys are like man that's kind of weird Anyway, and we just move on, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. and I have to like, furiously typing in my phone to try and figure it out. But apparently, um, people in late 19th century, in the late 19th century, latecomers to ball games were cordoned off into standing room areas in foul territory, and since they were herded like cattle, it was known <laughs> as the bullpen, uh, hmm. a designation which was retained. Which, when those areas became the spot where relief pitchers would warm up. So, yeah. Mm. So it was wow. just 
where people were kept and it was roped off and they were herded like cattle. So we called it the bullpen. bullpen. (laughs) So there you go. (laughs) We heard you. We're learning on this podcast today for the first time. I'll say I brought this up before, but I've seen Conan O'Brien live. And, uh, oh man, I, I bring it up because that what you, what you just read reminded me of the experience. Oh yeah. When you go to see something like a late, a live taping like that, like you are herded like cattle. Oh yeah. Like you're there's stanchions everywhere and you're told like line up down this hallway along the wall, stand here and then you wait for 30 minutes. And then like they move you down this hallway a little bit closer and then you stand there for like 30 minutes. Oh my gosh. And then they they then they'll break you into two to go into two door and like you feel like cattle cuz like you're not allowed to leave or like you potentially lose your seat and and it's just it's like a good 2 hours of just like waiting in line just to get in the studio. <sighs> Ugh. I feel like that'd be worth it more than getting on like the Millennium Force. Oh, it was yeah, worth it. I'm not Conan. complaining. Like I, yeah, it wasn't. I, I wasn't put out by it, but you yeah. definitely feel like they're just hurt because they do mm-hmm. it every single day. So like, yeah. it's just a whole new group of strangers every day. So yeah, just routine. So we're just a bunch of cattle in mm-hmm. our office. We are basically we're very valuable cattle, though. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah, you're the fattened calf. The fattened will. calf. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh man, the prized bulls. <laughs> mm-hmm. The prized bulls in the bullpen. Okay. <laughs> well, the bullpen has a very social atmosphere. Oh, though. for sure. Like there's interaction. There's mm-hmm. someone to talk to. Yeah. You're redeeming it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bulls need socialization. <laughs> okay. well, we just got to keep your red out of that room. <laughs> your pets need socialization. That's true. It's so good to have Enjoy more it. than one bull at a time. Oh yes, I usually on Mondays. Usually the bullpen is just me, and it's it's oh, a little yeah. sad. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And you had something Friday night too, didn't you, with the students? Friday night, yes, was pretty cool. Um, we <laughs> pretty, had a field cool. day or game night, whatever we we end up calling it field day because it was just a big rotation of sports over at Open Door Lorraine. Oh, nice. Yeah, God's doing something cool with a few of the youth pastors in Lorain County, and we have been doing events um, like once a quarter, kind of like date night, will be, uh, <laughs> throughout the year. And um, this was one of the bigger ones this summer, where we had four youth groups go over and uh, use Open Door Lorain's campus, because it's an old YMCA. Oh, huh. It was a YMCA building in like 1970, mm. and so it's... Um, it's already kind of a sports complex. Yeah. So they've got a field house on there. Oh, they've that's got, cool. They've got a gym in there. They've got actually a weight room there. And their student center is really cool. And they got a big field outside they could play kickball at. So, yeah, we just divided, like, all the groups up. We made sure we shuffled them up in the beginning so they weren't just stuck with their friends or, like, sticking with their friends. Stuck with their friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they were... <laughs> That they had to meet new people. Oh, yeah. They had to hang out and play games with these other people. And so at the end, it was like, hey, who met somebody new? And everybody had their hand up. And then they did this horrible thing, which I didn't like, (laughs) where they said, we're going to have, like, the winner, the the team with the best record of all the games decide what two leaders to pie in the face. Oh, no. Yeah, so I was, like, tempted to hide, (laughs) you know. (laughs) And... I was voted as one of these two I saw leaders the to get pied. It's a good picture. Um, one, and I thought I was safe. This, uh, yeah, another youth pastor was chosen first, and I was like videotaping him, and I was like hyping up the kids, like, "Yeah, those guys, yeah, get them." I'm also a kid. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do? Taping this, and uh, yeah, I got a great video of him, and then the second person was me. So Ugh. I had to go up there. <laughs> <laughs> little Eli Furukawa. I thought that was Eli. Came up and, you know, it would it would have been fine if it was like sh- the shaving cream pie that at least smells nice, you know? You like that better. Oh, yeah, that smells nice. It comes off easier. Oh, you get off, yeah. The whipped cream, it was the whipped cream pie. Yeah, I hate that. And he just like <laughs> wiped it all the way through my oh. hair. So it's just this old milk sugar as I'd... <laughs> Old milk sugar, yep. you. Within like two minutes, that stuff smells like old milk sugar. That's the best way I can describe it. Yeah. And it's yeah, in my no beard warning. and no it's warning. on my hair. I they mean, didn't they give said, you any time to prep either. Like no. I had the garbage bag. I had something on my head. Yeah, yeah. My hair. You no, just there went. was just like a tarp on the floor. And, and afterward, I was handed a Kleenex box. <laughs> and I was like, 
Where are the towels? Where's the bathroom? Figure it out, <laughs> yeah. old milk sugar. Somebody help me. Yeah, it sounds like God's really doing something. <laughs> it, yeah, it was it was fun to the kids, you know. <laughs> sometimes He's just ruining your night. That's sometimes a- <laughs> you got to do that. But there are yeah, nights man. like that where I'm like, I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> I, it doesn't bother me. I don't know because they did it at VBS and yeah. I know the kids like people are like, oh man, I'm so sorry. Or the people who were pie me in the face, some of them were like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, why? This They love this. Right. It's so motivating for them and it's, and it's fun for them and it's fine. Yeah. I'll be fine. And it was that. a uniting thing for all the kids. Like yeah, yeah, not only do they get to know each other, they're laughing and hanging out. At your expense. And cheering. And sometimes that's at my expense. And they could have got away with one person though, being pied. I know. They were gonna do three leaders. Yeah. They ended up just doing two. Yeah, in our text group amongst the youth pastors was like, wouldn't it be cool if the winning team, the team with the best record, chose a couple of leaders to get pied and none of us responded. <laughs> You're like, that wouldn't be cool, actually. Yeah. I would not like this that. This was one person's idea. Yeah, it was one person's idea. And they did that not get pied, support. I'm guessing. And they they did not get pied. No. Yeah, exactly. Of course. But anyway. <laughs> um, dunk tank all over again. Oh, yeah, boy. now we've got Connect Youth Conference in a couple of days. Yes. And those youth groups will be coming with us to that. Um joining us here, I should say. And then we're going to have a worship night at House of Praise in Lorraine with all of our youth uh, August 16th. So, How many do you think you are... How many are you expecting this weekend? Do you think? It's tough, I know. Hopefully close to 200. That'll be cool. Yeah. Tell us about what's going on, though. Yeah, youth conference is for... Well, it's youth and young adults. It's Mm -hmm. for 12 to 22-year-olds, we've been saying, so junior high to young adults. And we're connecting students to Jesus. That's the mission of our church. And so that's the mission of this conference. And we're trying to make it like a layup for other pastors to just come and bring their students. And I should say Ali Oop. It's not Ali Oop. We're throwing it up there like, hey, bring your students. This is going to be great for them. The theme is let's grow so that everybody that's involved grows in their faith or they even grow from death to life. They make a decision to follow Christ at this event for the first time, maybe. We've seen that every year. So we want it to be that kind of event, that kind of um, catalyst event for for young people to make that decision for the first time or rededicate their life to Christ and and definitely, most importantly, be plugged into their local church and serving. Um, what we find, and I'm, I'm finding more out right now, is that a lot of youth in this generation that are going into high school or the generation coming up um, like they are just going and leaving the church. <laughs> They're going to be church dropouts. It's it's just crazy, the statistics that are coming out of Barna and everything. So we're trying to have a conference like this that, again, acts at a, as a catalyst event. So they go, I'm not going to drop out of the church. This is my community. This is where I'm going to serve. This is where I'm going to spend my life. Um, and th- this is where I'm going to, um, you know, stake my belief system on the truth of the gospel and live from here on out in that way. So there's lots of cool things going on that would be fun for youth there. We've got Nobles Darby coming, who's a, a chaplain, an NBA and NFL chaplain. Christopher Sincere, he's, he's an upcoming Christian rapper who's going to perform. Rob Knorr is a local rapper, but he also works for Youth for Christ. Um, he's been serving in like the juvie centers of Northeast Ohio. He's a powerful speaker. Um, so he's going to be speaking as well. I'm going to close out the conference as the third speaker, Nichelle Mosley and her band coming and leading worship, um, Chick-fil-A, barbecue, Sorrento's Pizza, all sorts of good food tossed in there. Yeah, We're going to have a whole arcade in the East Wing. <sighs> Super cool. Which they wish they had a date night, but it's going to be at Connect Conference. I, w- I wish we had that a date <laughs> night. That'd be awesome. Um, so yeah, man, please be praying for, for all of that mm. and uh, get your kids signed up if you haven't yet. Yeah, so this, so this will, comes out, this will come out on Thursday. Yeah, so they, there's still time as this you're day listening one, to this. Yeah. This is the day of the day one. Three yeah. days, right? Thursday. <laughs> Three days. Do it now. Yeah, do Friday it right night. now. What time does it start on Thursday and Friday? Yeah, so they can check in at 6 o'clock Thursday and Friday. Doors will be open at 5.30 Thursday and Friday. Saturday is a, a daytime event, so we'll start at 10 a.m. on Saturday and go till like 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Oh, dang. So That's we can awesome. get this place ready for Sunday again. 
But anyway, yeah, it's three days, but, you know, I'm even seeing kids select, like, I can only come Thursday and Saturday. I've got something Friday, whatever it might be. You can select the day you can come, and you can just pick a day pass. Yeah. So How many people are going to get pied? <laughs> yeah, no no pieing. Decided no pieing. No, I'm super excited, though, because, like, we're figuring out how to do live entertainment um, when Judah and Logan, our MCs, are running, like, the fun game stuff mm-hmm. on the stage. Where, like, if you go to a professional hockey game or basketball game and you see these, like, halftime things on the Jumbotron. Yeah, yeah. Like, the lookalike yeah. segment or the yeah, song in stuff. my heart segment. Yeah, they're yeah. going to, like, run up to kids with the microphone on their chest. And it's going to be, like, some random Taylor Swift song or whatever. <laughs> It'll be super funny to laugh at. <laughs> Can't wait. We've got it's some funny great. lookalike you know, pictures that'll be next to a kid's face that looks like them, <laughs> especially this kid who looks like little Drew Carey that we've got coming. <laughs> oh, they're already pre-selected. Oh, they're pre-selected. <laughs> you submit a photo and then yeah, yeah. you register. Yeah, so it's going to be a blast. I need to know what you look like for reasons. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't have the we don't have the budget or the technology of Wait a minute. Do kids the know who Drew Carey is? In case they don't, this kid also looks like Dash from The Incredibles. <laughs> Okay. And he also looks like Ralphie from A Christmas Story. A very specific. So he's overlap. getting three in a row. Get... <laughs> the whole segment is just this one kid. Well, it's also Dennis the Menace. <laughs> that's pretty. Yeah. Well, if he didn't have the glasses on. Yeah. That's pretty good. Dennis the Menace is pretty good. No, there's lots of others, but that's like the highlight one. So <laughs> that's the one he's the most proud of. I'm excited for that. <laughs> yeah. If that kid only knew what's coming. Yeah. I'm sure he does. That sounds like a lot of fun. (laughs) August 1st through the 3rd. And uh, let's grow. Let's grow, baby. Let's grow. Rewind it back if you need to hear about the times to be here again. So this will, yeah, this will release on Thursday. So Mm -hmm. at that point, though, they don't probably don't need to register online. Just come. Yeah. So if you're hearing this on Thursday, just get to the church. Just show up. Yeah. You'll have walk-in registration. We will. We will. Okay. Yeah. So that's fine. Just do it. Just be here. Bring friends. Bring everybody. Yeah. <laughs> is arcade that's coming? Is that is that like a off site thing that you like mm-hmm. you rented? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen those. Yeah, I saw them at an event uh, earlier in the summer, and I reached out to them to to get a price on what it would be. Or so. uh, our the uh, N- <laughs> Nintendo GameCube that we own. Was yeah. Going to be enough. <laughs> That wasn't going to be enough, but I'm going to still have that out. Our GameCube, our respect, PS4, respect. our 20 year old gaming system. But these are this GameCube is uh, great. It's classic. I yeah, it. yeah, but and they have it's a very like multiplayer GameCube already. So yeah, um, this is all going to be very multiplayer focused games from this place. That's what I liked yeah. about it because they are specifically for events like this. So it's like four player Mario Kart. Yeah, nice. Like multiplayer, some kind of DDR dance game. Yeah, Great. you know, stuff like that. As many people as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. That's yeah. exciting. I am just going to pie random people. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I mean, is the leader that arranged the first one, like, is he coming? Is he part of? Will he yeah, be yeah. Like, there we, we go. Uh, just get him. Just while, just on site. Vengeance is mine. <laughs> 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 you just walk up, like, hey, man, thanks yeah. for coming. Wow. Yeah, now you're at my church, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I set the rules here. This is a pecan pie. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard and crusty. I think you scratched my cornea. Yes, yes. It'll be fun. Yeah. Really excited. Very cool. It's exciting. Yeah. Prep it. Stoked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got a big week. You'll be exhausted. <laughs> yeah, I'm already there. Are so. you taking any time off after? Are you taking a breather? I'm going to do my best, man. Yeah. At the end of August, I've got a little thing planned, but we need like, like you said, family vacations. We haven't got our full on mm-hmm. vacation time in yet. So yeah, yeah. it's just kind of how it goes. Um, my wife works markets <laughs> and has a live events all summer. Yeah. And then I've got this big one and a few other smaller events throughout the summer. So I kind of have to push through. We both do <laughs> until this, and then mm-hmm. we get more of a, that's tough. End of summer, early fall vacation in. Yeah. In September, I October. I like that time of year, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love nice. it. Love the weather. Yeah. We're going to go to like, uh, what's it called? San- what's by We're not going. Pl- I don't what's know. What's that place by Sandusky? I'm drawing a blank. Marble Toledo. Marble Clinton. Oh. 
Yeah, we're going to go to Marblehead and Port Clinton for a long weekend at the end of August. Nice. And then, like, nobody's there because the season's over. It's true. <laughs> so I like it's it that way. It'll be very quiet. Yeah, I like it that way. Yeah. Good. What well, let's welcome this? everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. Welcome to the Atrium Podcast. It's a podcast of Hope Christian Church <laughs> uh, where we answer the most pressing questions. Like, what does the bullpen mean? Yes. Live. Uh, my name is Mark. Pleasure. I am the adult pastor here at Hope. And to my right. Hey, I'm the student pastor. I'm Chad. And you are? And I'm Zach. And I'm one of the bulls. <laughs> and? I'm the fa- and the family pastor. <laughs> the we let's not in. confuse the people. <laughs> One of the bulls. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. my yoke is easy. <laughs> so we've been off for a few weeks. Um, the Roman series wrapped up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Neil concluded that uh, and then went on his vacation. Um, in that time, we've started a new sermon series called Heaven is My Home. And um, we're two weeks into that. This past Sunday was the second, second sermon in that series. Um, and I'll kind of recap that. Uh, here here in a bit. Um, but even before that, I wanted to just throw it out there, maybe a little candidly ask you guys, uh, what what do you think when you think of heaven? Like when you hear that, that's such a, there's so much behind that topic, that idea. And we all have different perspectives. We're coming from different backgrounds. I'm curious, just where does your, kind of where does your mind first go when you think of something like that? Because, I got, you know, I got a lot of feedback because we announced what the series would be on and people were, you know, sharing their thoughts and, you know, how I might go about it and uh, just no right or wrong answers. Well, I thought it was interesting. Um, cause I got to, I haven't listened to um, this week's, but I listened to last week's and how you were saying that, like, this is something that we should be thinking about. We should be thinking about heaven. And I'm, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't, I don't know that I, I don't do a lot of dwelling on it. Cause I'm like, you know, does, is it, is that okay? Is it, you know, is it right to be thinking about those things and not focusing on the things that we're doing here on this earth? But I mean, sometimes I would say the times that I am thinking about heaven is when, (laughs) when things are really tough and really hard. Yeah. Um, specifically when I, um, when I taught, there was, there was, uh, my fifth year of teaching, and I just had a particularly tough group of kids. There were just some that who were um, very disrespectful. Um, and, and it was, you know, every day it felt like it was difficult um, to even just go in and to, and to do my job. And there were some days where I would come home and feel so defeated. And I was like, this just, this cannot be it. You know, I, and, and that may sound like, um, <laughs> that may sound like, you know, I don't want to say nothing, but that's, I know the kind of things that people go through and, and we see the kind of things that people need prayer for it. But, but like, I just felt so defeated and like every day I would wake up and go in and I was like, I just felt so devalued. Mm. And I was like this, there, there has, you know, I yeah. know that there's something better than this and it has to be better than what this is now. Yeah. And I just wish, um, you were talking about being homesick. Like I, like that was, I think that was the first time in my life that I think I was really homesick for heaven where I was just like, I just, I just felt, I felt awful. I mean, I, maybe, maybe it was depression. I don't know if it was really that bad, but like yeah. I had pretty, pretty bad anxiety about it um, every single day, but that's the, it made me recall that and those feelings and just desiring for something more, something better. Yeah. Yeah. No, teaching is no joke. It's I not. Mean, <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart. Uh, yeah. No, my wife's a, my wife's a teacher as well, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a very real being with those kids. And it takes a special gifting. It really does. It takes a special. And I mean, I think that's also why God moved you into the role you're in now. Like you have you have that young bull energy. <laughs> like you have. podcast title, <laughs> young bull energy. Yes. Um, Yours always has an animal in it. It was groundhog energy last time. It's groundhog energy. Last that's the young time. Bull that's right. I get really excited about animals. That's <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe that's the that's the thing. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that's been something that's really this isn't exactly what we were kind of pivoting from what your original question was, but I love that I do still get to teach. It's just something mm-hmm. different. 
Um, <laughs> I would argue even better than math. Sorry for anybody that listens to the, the one other math teacher that listens to this, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just for you, just a quick sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> Gospel's better than math. <laughs> I was really excited that you chose to use this as your topic for this summer series because it is such an abstract um, topic to really think about and get your head around. I mean, you're just never going to get your head around it. Mm-hmm. I've never had a good frame of reference for what I'm expecting <laughs> when it comes to... It's like a lot of vague. Yeah. Like, it's going to be really good. <laughs> like, I only have I only have a frame of reference for the comforts I enjoy on this side of heaven. Right. So to try and get my imagination to think about the comfort and peace I'm going to experience in the presence of my father in the presence of God and in in living as a true permanent citizen of this eternal kingdom coming. Yeah. I, I guess those are some of the best words I can try and explain yeah. it to myself yeah. when I'm preaching that to myself. But what am I actually in my mind thinking is going to happen? I know any, everything, I guess that people try to ask, like you brought up, um, is there going to be golf in heaven? Is there going to be Chipotle in heaven? So is there going to be food, right? Wait, we know we're going to have get, bodies. Mark's going to get there. Is that week? Is that week three? Yeah. yeah, yeah. There it is. Look forward to that. Some kind of food for sure. <laughs> Something. It's like the one thing everybody's remembered. <laughs> that and that is the that one thing. The well, it's so, it's so integral to people. Yeah. Like we need food. It's so integral to people, and that is the one thing that God over and over through Jesus with the parables and mm-hmm. even speaking on the kingdom through people seeing some glimpse of it in visions in, in scripture. Yeah. It's all about all people from all nations sitting at the table, enjoying yeah. food together. Yeah. This experience of communion together with each other and with the Lord. So I know in some fashion that that is there and I love food. Oh, and food is so, be a and food is good. <laughs> really do like food. Yeah. <laughs> Like yeah. God, I this is something that Marissa and I talk about every once in a while that it's like God made food that tastes good. And we're on the pursuit of it. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. like it's on me and my it wife tasted bad. bucket list to go to like a Michelin restaurant one day that you have to like be on a wait list for several years for. You know, people pursue that and spend so much money yeah. and have this expectation, spend so much time waiting on that wait list for a Michelin star restaurant to be on that list. Yeah. People save up money in their savings accounts to make sure they have that experience. Yeah. And that's yeah. just from some brilliant chef here on earth. Yeah. Yep. And it's such a glimpse of, oh, that's what we're all trying to do as people who follow Jesus. <laughs> yeah. We're like, we like know we're on this wait list and we're waiting for whatever that experience is that's going to be like un- unlike any other experience to my palate, to my senses, I guess. Yeah. Um, and, uh, an, an experience of love like we've never experienced. Mm-hmm. I guess I've gone a little further down understanding this kind of love when I've had a child. Mm. Like, I love my wife so much, but there's a different kind of and level of love for my son. Yeah. That I never could have described or expected before I actually had him in my life. So I guess, like, we're journeying towards that, that experience of love that we can't quite describe yet. And that's going to be that that heavenly love and experience and community. Yeah. And I think going off of that too, um, something else that I think about, especially we're, um, we've been talking about this um, on and off. My grandpa passed away on uh, last Tuesday and he was a believer and he loved the Lord and he left a legacy of Christ in his family. Um, him and his wife did. My grandma passed away over 10 years ago and, um, we're just at this point now where, you know, he's, he's, he's moved on. He is in heaven. He's with Jesus. And, um, you know, I want, I, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but I, I want to believe that he got to see my grandma again Mm. and, um, he gets to be reunited with her and yeah. Yeah. That's a powerful thing. It's good. Yeah. And I, and I look forward to the day when I get to see them again. Yeah. Yeah. Those are all good things. Um, that, that question, I, 
I've always had to or I've heard to. Like, are we going to know each other? Yeah, are we going to know each other? <laughs> are we yeah. going to recognize each other in heaven? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, so many things, and I touched on this a little bit this past week about the joys of heaven, mm -hmm. uh, and and the glimpses we have of that now, and the joys of 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 today. I use the example of Mitchell's ice cream, but that's what you guys are touching on. Mm -hmm. You know, the the joy of a Michelin starred restaurant, the joy of of having a grandpa that loves you and you love yeah and the the relationship he had with his wife um those are glimpses into the joys of eternity and all of those things like if we study scripture and we see how jesus relates to us and what he says that he is what does jesus say he is he says i'm the bread of life mm -hmm. <laughs> he says i'm the bread of life i'm true food so if you eat of me, you'll never you'll never be hungry. Mm -hmm. You'll be completely satisfied. And so that tells us that food actually is an indicator of Christ. We need to eat just like we need food. So when we eat, we remember we need Christ. We need Christ. We need Christ. And the joy that comes from food is a reminder of the joy of Christ. Mm. Just like just like sleep. We have to sleep. And that that the joy of sleeping for adults, maybe not for kids so much, but <laughs> right. Yeah. Food and sleep. That's all I've got guys. That's it. That's, that's the joy of my life. <laughs> sleep is a reminder. You know, we need a break. Mm -hmm. We are fallible. We're not, we're not all that we are designed to be. You know, the um, uh, scripture says in eternity, there'll be no more night. And that implies there'll be no more sleep. We're not going to have any more need for rest because we will be fully sustained by Christ who has no need for sleep. That's wild. God has no jammies. I heard that said in the conference. God well. has no jammies. He doesn't rest. <laughs> he doesn't sleep. And mm -hmm. so we'll be, we'll be, but now like when we sleep, we're reminded we need Christ. When we eat, we need Christ. Marriage that you've already said mm -hmm. is the reminder of the marriage with the lamb. We need Christ. So, yeah. Thinking about heaven has also helped me with experiencing contentment on this side of heaven too, even as like a young Christian. When it clicked that all of my life up to that point and what I was expecting my life to be beyond was that I was going to invest my time, my energy, my money into whatever was the smartest thing I could possibly do to sustain myself. Yeah. And then when I met Christ... It was a full understanding of contentment and that I'm not pers like pursuing anything in this life is, is so worthless compared to investing in uh, eternity, I guess is the way you would put it. Yeah. Investing in my, uh, my understanding that I have an eternal zip code now <laughs> yeah. and there's nothing better to invest in. Everything else is fleeting and temporary. Yeah. So not becoming famous, not becoming rich, not becoming notable whatever like all that kind of floated away yeah um i mean not that that in my sin nature is isn't th there sometimes but it wasn't what it used to be yeah like I, I used to think i'm gonna be discontent if i don't get to do this in my life or have this experience or become this type of person yeah and now that's all like it's not that big of a deal like it's small that's all small potatoes <laughs> yeah. compared to what god's offering me an eternal relationship with him. Which yeah. are big potatoes. Which, <laughs> which, you know what? That, that's uh ode to Jared. The last potato. <laughs> yes. Big potatoes, the ode to Jared. Um, big potatoes. And, and like right after you just talked about there'll be no night, there'll be no need for the sunlight anymore even because God will illuminate all things. Um, there's this really cool verse that I love that as I studied, I understood what water means in this side of heaven. It means chaos. It's always, in, especially in visions like Revelation. Yeah. Uh, like there's even a, a beast of the sea. There's just always this chaotic rule. There's um, chaotic, oppressive presence because of, presence e of evil and death. Because yeah. of the presence of evil, Satan, death, sin in this world. And all of a sudden at the end of chapter 21 of Revelation... It says, um, or no, sorry, at the start of chapter 22, then he showed me the river, the waters, right? He showed me the river of the water of life, clear as crystal, 
flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the city's main street. This picture that God is going to order everything right permanently. There will be no tossing of the waves as our sin nature goes back and forth. There will be no tossing of different empires ruling this place and oppressing people. Yeah. There will be... <laughs> Uh, there won't be this tossing back and forth of people experiencing um, unhealth and and death and loss and and sadness and depression anymore. All that chaos is gone. It says frozen over as ice, and it flows from him. It flows from his throne. I'm like, that's a really cool picture. All chaos will be gone. Everything will be ordered yeah. as it's supposed to be. So, yeah, I think it's the beginning of, verse, of chapter 21. It says there'll be no more sea. Mm -hmm. It's like, what does that mean? Like, he's just getting rid of water? No, right. that's what you're saying. He's getting rid of disorder and chaos. Yeah. Because the sea represents death. It represents in Scripture uh, that uncertainty. We yeah. don't know what's beneath the surface. Yeah. Evil lurks beneath the surface. Death, because we're not made to live on land. We yeah. can't, or I'm sorry, we're not made to live in the water. <laughs> Back to the we're water, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Dive in. Um. And so it's that that's, you know, we're not made for that. That's yeah. that's not what we're made for. So when chapter 21 says no more sea, it means no more death. Yeah. No more chaos. And that picture that that crystal river uh, that you can perfectly see through. There's no surprises. There's no there's nothing that's going to jump out and latch onto you or bite you. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. Well, the water is a scary place, man. <laughs> Dude, it is. <laughs> you think about guys who like lost their lives. They made so much money or they offered so much money like working on the Bering Sea. Because it's like, yeah, I don't even know. I'd have to look up. Yeah. Why don't you look it up? What's the percentage of people who <laughs> survive working on the Bering Sea? I mean, it's like that, uh, what's that crabbing show? Yeah. Where they go and they like, get the king crabs. Yeah, you know, talk about Deadliest Catch. Yeah. Deadliest Catch. Is that deadliest it? Deadliest Catch. It's, yeah. Uh, it's death. Whew. Oh, yeah, I have an aside too. We were watching a little bit of the Olympics last night. Oh, we were too. What we were what, what part were we watching? Diving, and that is just oh, the we most diving. baffling sport to me. Just di high dives. It's synchronized, so there's two. It's like you know, it's a ten foot or ten meter dive, but there's two people doing the same thing, and they're trying to match each other as close as possible. It's like, how does that ever become an Olympic sport? I get the diving part, like doing these fancy dives and but like why why two to synchronize i don't know how does a bullpen become a relief pitcher's <laughs> practicing area when it used to be where we cattled fans i mean <laughs> it's, it's just, I don't, I, I tradition don't man yeah it's like all this stuff like the <laughs> tradition the uh the saddle horse and the the high bar the uneven bars all the right. balance beam yeah 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 just like okay it's all and like some of them it's art. like some of it's like like this is not a sport that like hundreds of thousands of people are even trying. <laughs> right. You know, like the luge yeah. or uh like these like kind of sports where you have to have like specialized a equipment. course and mm -hmm. very special, very expensive equipment. Like there's only a handful of people in the world even doing this. And yet it's like compete competed at at a world world I don't know. That's my side. <laughs> It's very cool, though. We watched. <laughs> we've been watching a lot of it. Oh yeah, it's, it's very impressive. I it's, mean, it's, I, I, it's impressive what they're doing. But it's like, how is this? How is this picked? Anyway, mm. so um, one thing, one thing. When I was preparing this series, I thought about, um, I thought about seeing how many songs I could sneak into it, um, <laughs> and just drop the names of of how many. Because I, I looked into it. There's probably there's a lot of so songs that have many, heaven in them. There's so many, so many songs that talk about heaven. Yeah. Um, heaven what is do you a got? place yeah, on earth. Well, I, I've, I did that one. I did that one in week one. <laughs> <laughs> I've dropped a couple more, but I'm not going to say which ones because I'm trying to do it. Subtly. Low key. Ooh, um, low key. Hey. Force Frank. What else comes to mind? Do you have any? Can you Stairway to one? Heaven. Stairway to Heaven. Yep. That's which classic. is based on what? I don't know. Jacob's Ladder. 
<laughs> Jacob's ladder is the stairway to heaven. Oh boy, the vision of Led Zeppelin, of course. <laughs> <Genesis>. <laughs> okay, That's, it's, it's biblical. The right, the sure. Stairway to heaven is is Jacob's ladder that in his dream he saw a stairway to heaven. Jesus comes and in the book of John says, "I am that. I am Jacob's ladder." Mm, okay. It's also about Lord of the Rings, kind of. It seems based on the lyrics. <laughs> what else? I had. Let's see. I looked. I looked up some. Knocking on Heaven's Door. Okay, yeah. Guns N' Roses. Um, knock, knock, knocking on Heaven's Door. <laughs> which is originally, which was actually a cover. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't know that either. It, f- it feels like, yeah, I felt like it was somebody else in the back of my mind. Yeah, but. that's what a cover is. It means someone else. <laughs> I know, but I, I, I didn't think it was Guns N' Roses. Oh, man. It's who was, coming it, who for was you. the original? Sorry. I'm sorry. The original was Bob Dylan. I didn't know this. Ah, there oh, it is. It's a Bob Dylan song. Uh, Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Nope, don't know that one. Meatloaf. My grandpa was a Meatloaf fan. <laughs> cheeseburger. Cheese- in Paradise. Cheeseburger in Paradise. So is this also, <laughs> does Paradise also count? Yes, Paradise. Paradise counts. Paradise. Um, Gangsta's Paradise. Paradise is referred to once in Scripture. In the New Testament, we'll say. It's referred to by Jesus on the cross. He says, to you'll, the be thief, with me. "You'll be with me in paradise." Mm-hmm. In paradise, the word in the in the Greek is very is closely attached to the the word in Hebrew that was used for Eden. So this idea of paradise is, is the idea of a garden. Um, so some people, I, I in my in studying for all this, like some some people use paradise to kind of refer to the this intermediate state of what heaven is now. So paradise refers to like the current state of heaven mm. and then the new heavens and the new earth will be like the final heaven. Um, heaven can wait by Michael Jackson. Anyone? You guys Maybe are if young. I heard it. Oh you guys man. Are too young for all these. I feel like there's going to be a lot of I these. Know a lot be like, Michael I Jackson. Know. Heaven by warrant. Nope. Not even at all. I remember seeing that on an infomercial where they're trying to sell you a CD with like a bunch of, I didn't know like warrant. 30 hair metal bands, like in their, their big oh. ballads, like the, yeah, but I, I really should be having this conversation with Neil. You should. Neil this is a bad week to do. I, know, this. I didn't know any, loving this. I didn't know Warrant did this anything is... besides cherry pie. No, Heaven was a big one. It was a big one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, one sweet day. Nope. Mariah Carey. Uh, I can only imagine. I mentioned that one. Well, that's that seems that's a kind of low hanging fruit. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, low hanging. Uh, the great gig in the sky pink floyd anyway nice this is just not i feel so bad <laughs> like most of these i'm like i just don't know them but it's referenced a lot i know the artists yeah i know the artists well but this idea of heaven is in it's in the it's in the the secular mindset oh yeah like it's in the secular uh subconscious like the world is not as atheistic as we maybe sometimes paint it to be, but we are also very colored and influenced by the world and its view of heaven. I mentioned that week one. Yeah. Um, you know, our our perception of what heaven really is is influenced by, I think, partially kind of what we're, you know, our experience here on earth will influence our picture of heaven as it should, I think. I think it's supposed to. Um, but also movies. And songs and TV shows and all of that will color how we view heaven and what we think heaven actually is, including pop songs like Stairway to Heaven. Uh, and then there's also a bunch of hymns too, but I don't think anybody's interested in hearing hymns. <laughs> no? <laughs> Sing them. I'm gonna, I was going to say, those I will probably know more readily than <laughs> I'll Fly <laughs> Away. Yes. Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. That's one of my favorites. Uh-huh. When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. Uh-huh. Blessed assurance when we all get to heaven. Yep. In the sweet by and by, it's mm-hmm. well with my soul. Mm-hmm. I'm but a stranger here. I didn't know that one, but Bob introduced that one to me. Um, that's a good one, too. Mm. Uh, and, and, and we'll see even uh, one thing I, when I was researching all this. A lot of these hymns came out of the American South. They were old spirituals that were sung by the slaves mm-hmm. uh, who had the worst possible imaginable lives. They're literally stolen, taken to another country, sometimes separated from their family, could be sold again at any point in their life, 
and separated from their family if they were able to have one or, or even start one and had no hope at all in this present present earth. They had no hope that they might be freed or they might earn their free. Like some of them, it was they were born and died within the slavery system. And yet the, the songs that they refer to as spirituals that they would sing over and over again, we, we see they had a, a huge focus on heaven. That's what they, that's where their hope was. That's mm. where they were putting their, um, their, their focus, their sight. I talked about, I've talked about for the last two weeks. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of biblical principle there. When the Israelites were, um, about to leave the wilderness and go into the promised land, um, they're finally going to make it to the promised land, which is a, a typology for heaven. That's a, it's God trying to explain heaven to us, a promised land. Before they went in, God sternly warned them and said, hey, you're going to get into the promised land, and there's a very real risk that you're going to build your houses and, and get your money and fill up your vineyards, and as soon as you're comfortable, you're going to forget me. As soon as you are satisfied with your stuff and you're, you're in a place of prosperity, you're going to forget that I gave all this to you and you're going to think, I did this myself. Yeah. And so we see like these slaves who had no reason to hope, no reason to think they would ever be comfortable. In fact, they, they were potentially facing these miserable, torturous conditions for the rest of their life, put their hope fully in heaven. And, and it came out in their singing. It came out in their hymns. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. All the just injustice that they endured, they, they found comfort in this idea of heaven. And we're, I think, at risk of, the, of that too. We're very comfortable in where we're at. This is um, a prosperous country. I yeah. mean, we are, we're among the 2% wealthiest people ever to have lived just because we live in America. I think I, I read that statistic once. If you, if you have access to, or no, if you have any amount of money in the bank, any amount, then you're wealthier than the 98% of the people that have ever lived, which is, which is mind blowing. Oh yeah. And so the first two weeks that in the sermon series, um, I've tried to, I, I've said at kind of at the end of, I'm trying to frame it all that the first two weeks have been really about this present age, like how our focus needs to be on eternity our focus needs to be looking forward. Like in Hebrews 11, all the heroes of the faith that, that did all these great things for the kingdom of God, he, he, the author says it's because they were thinking about heaven. If they were thinking about this present time, they wouldn't have gone through what they went through. They wouldn't have done what they did. So um, I have had like a couple people say, you know, it's not quite exactly what they thought it would be. Um, because it's not, I, I, and I, I, I mentioned this week one at the, at the front end, like there's, there's a, you could, you could do a series like this and then just sit up there and, and kind of talk about what heaven will be like and, and go through what, you know, the, the, the famous passages in scripture that kind of give those glimpses into heaven and say, well, this is the kind of food we'll have. This is, and I am going to do that a little bit the next two weeks, but the first two weeks I want us to focus like here and now, how should we view heaven? Like how should it color and impact the way we live? Because if we have that heavenly perspective, it'll impact our day-to-day -day life. I so I, I started off with that that quote by C.S. Lewis uh, where he, he says um, the, the basically the people, the great heroes of the faith who accomplished mo the most for this world uh, – they did so because they were thinking of the next world. They were nah, thinking that was of, powerful of heaven. Yeah. Um, and and then it's 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 a well known quote by C.S. Lewis if you've ever read him. Um, but it says our our, our minds should be occupied with heaven. Yeah. Uh, if we aim at heaven, we'll get the earth thrown in. If we aim at earth, we'll get neither. And and it's it's a, it's a powerful quote. Um, because it it got to the heart of what I wanted to say for these first couple weeks is that that's where our minds here need to be occupied on. Because I've, I've seen, and I've gotten, I've gotten this, I've heard it asked, it's been asked of me, uh, like, like that we almost feel bad about thinking about heaven. Like, like we don't, like if we, if we want heaven, if we desire heaven, 
it's it's we think that our faith isn't genuine or we just want the we just want the goods we just want the reward but if we understand that heaven is getting jesus fully then that should be all we want and so week one I, I focused on how heaven what heaven is by definition is us seeing god face to face that's ultimately what's going to satisfy our souls and it's not chipotle it's not uh, <laughs> right. it's not you know it's not your dog making it to heaven it's not it's not even seeing your it's family. not even seeing your loved ones your mm-hmm. family and those are good things and 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 but they're secondary blessings um because if you think like we tend to just take this experience of of this earth and and just magnify it which i think it, it will be in heaven but that's ultimately not the end game the the end game is for us to enjoy god forever not to enjoy chipotle forever <laughs> will he bless us with chipotle probably it's yeah, it's, it's new with... heaven and new earth and new Chipotle. So I do think, yeah, I do think like <laughs> things that we've created that are good in this life are going to be seen and visible and experienced in in that life. Yeah, but the priority is the new heaven that we have yeah. never. We don't like I said earlier. We don't have a frame of reference for. It. I don't even really know how to desire it. Right. My hope is that I like what Mark just said. Have this desire for my God. <laughs> right. And whatever he has planned in that eternal life uh, experience that's up to him and i trust and when him with we get, that and when we get to when we get to that state we're going to be so transfixed yeah on christ and and our our, our loved ones will be by our side but they're going to be so transfixed too yeah. they're going to be like it's good to see you but but look at this yeah <laughs> look at christ all of our affection, all of our love will be directed at Christ. And um, I'm paying attention to the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> but but Shh. but do you guys have you guys ever experienced that? Because I've 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 had people have asked me that. They say they feel guilty for thinking about heaven. Or or even just downplaying it, thinking like it's mm. it's it's almost there's something noble in not thinking about heaven. Like like it's it's Jesus wouldn't want us to focus on the, you know, he wants us to focus on the here and now, not what we'll have someday. And yet scripture really says the opposite. Yeah, so I often hear more of the worldview that seems to come out of the left behind theology. Yeah. And and praying, I just want to be done with this life in this world. It's not bad to say Jesus come back, but if it's not hand in hand with I'm spending every waking moment I possibly can, or I'm at least I'm desiring to and pursuing to, um, to bring about God's love, mercy, and justice, and compassion, and goodness in this world with all the time I have. Then saying like Jesus come back, like I I don't got time for this, <laughs> the way this place is. Yeah. <laughs> then we're that we have an issue with not see, not taking inventory on our own sinful internal lives. Yeah. So I've seen that opposite thing where like people spend too much time with that left behind theology of like, can't wait to just, you know, be snapped out of here. Right. And then they don't actually, you know, go 10 toes deep into doing the the work that God has for them in this life. Yeah. So there's, there's a, a that escapist mentality. There's a quote um, I have written down here. Um, Oliver Wendell Holmes. He was a, a Supreme court justice. And a, and a law scholar, brilliant guy. And he, he said, some people are so heavenly minded that they are no earthly good. Mm. And that's the counterpoint yeah. to it. Yeah. Oof. That, that they, that's, they, that's it. They've yeah. got their head in the clouds. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's not what Paul says in, in uh, Philippians one that we looked at this week um, to yes. live, to live as Christ, to die as gain. And he says, I, I would much rather be with Christ. Right. I would rather depart, be at home with Christ, because that is far, far better. But if I stay here in the flesh, it means fruitful labor for me. Yes. And um, that's not the, the, the sinking ship mindset. Mm-hmm. Uh, this idea that uh, this earth is, um, is the Titanic, it's going down, 
uh, there's no point in doing anything because this is all going to soon be at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, there's the the mindset of, uh, you know, this earth is going to be destroyed. It's going to be uh, consumed in fire. There's no point in doing anything now. Yeah. Uh, and I think scripture speaks actually against that. And I'm actually going to talk about that a little bit this week. Um, that scripture will not, or the creation will not be annihilated. It'll be renewed uh, just like we are renewed as believers um when when the new heaven and the new earth comes down it's actually a renewal of creation it's not yeah. it's not an annihilation of what exists and then a whole new just reboot and reset it's a it's a renewal as in the flood was a renewal it renewed the earth through judgment and through a, a rebirth yeah and we as christians have a call to prepare for to prepare the earth and to prepare its people for that renewal, not for its annihilation and <laughs> complete recreation, mm -hmm. but for its renewal. So, what are you doing to to like Paul said, um, practice fruitful labor and fellowship with the Spirit? Yeah, that's what you're called to. Not to have your your head in the clouds, as right. Mark said, all the time. Right. It's a both and. And uh, this week, this week I, I, I talked about um, YOLO and FOMO. I saw that on the yeah. screen. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it was, but I saw that part on the screen. Trying your best to catch up to today's lingo. <laughs> That's yesterday's lingo <laughs> now. Uh, I know. I was going to say. Welcome, YOLO, to, tw welcome uh, to 2013, Mark. Well, no, I, I, I looked it up. YOLO has been around a lot longer than, um, than most people think. Since Do, you mean YOLO lives. or you only live once? YOLO. YOLO... Well, the the whole thing. Okay. Are you getting at, at the quote you used? What's that? That was like Marcus Aurelius. Oh. No, no. I mean, actual YOLO. It's been around a long time, actually, guys. <laughs> well, the con I said it, the concept has been around. Right, the right. The concept has been oh, around sure. since the Garden of Eden. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. I mean, at, at, at the heart right. of it. Yeah. Touche. Satan tricked Eve into FOMO. Like, Satan tricked Eve into yeah. You're missing out on what God has for you. He's keeping something good from you by not letting you eat this apple because he knows you'll be like him. And literally, that's FOMO. That's yeah. the fear mm -hmm. of missing out. Mm -hmm. um, and then YOLO's there too. You only live once. <laughs> Surely you will not die. Yeah. Anyway, but even but even throughout history, like this idea of YOLO and FOMO has been represented in different ways like like marcus aurelius and the quote i used from him um like paul and the quote i used let's eat drink uh and be merry you know the the preacher of ecclesiastes says that mm -hmm. and so this idea has is you know if there is no afterlife then all we should focus on is the here and now like get it while you can like get everything you can while you can because this is it where's i going with this what, were we, what did we say before I lost my train of thought. YOLO and FOMO is what you were talking about. YOLO and FOMO. All right. What were you saying before? Oh, well. You had a quote, and I said what you're about to pull out the Marcus Aurelius one that you used. Oh, oh, YOLO. Yeah, YOLO's been around since like the 70s or 80s. Mm -hmm. But really? then it, it just got popular when, when Drake used it in the song, used it on one of his albums or something. Yeah. And then, like, and that was about 10 years ago. So for, like, about 10 years, this YOLO expression has been popular. Anyway, so I, I touched on YOLO and FOMO um, because those are, those are very earthly-minded mindsets. Those are the mindset that uh, of the Hebrews 11 talks about of thinking back to the land that we came out of, this earthly mindset. And... Hebrews counters that by saying we should have a heavenly mindset looking forward to a heavenly home uh, and then that will that will influence what we do here in this in this in this life to counter this this quote that some people are so heavenly minded they're of no earthly good we're not heavenly minded in the sense that we're no earthly good we're earthly good because we're heavenly minded mm. like because we are heavenly minded that's what drives us to be good earthly, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, man. So I, I, has that, I don't know, has that been, I, have you ever come across that, uh, that, that feeling like that you don't want to think about heaven or you don't want to, 
or you just don't think about it. I mean, that's what I was saying before is like, you just, it's one of those things where it's like, ah, uh, why? You know, if we're focusing on that, it's, it's like, it feels, you were talking about this before and it's like, I don't know, it feels like a form of pride, I guess, where it's like, you know, this is this thing that we have waiting for us and, and it's going to be so great. And it's like, uh, but I, you know, I yeah. need to keep my head down. I need to do what I'm, I need to do what I'm supposed to do. I need to think about this, but like, that's, that can really get in the way. Cause then all you're focusing on is the stuff that you're doing wrong. Yeah. Um, when you're thinking about the the pitfall you fall into when you're only thinking about your sin and you're like, I, you know, I don't want to sin. I know I'm, I'm not supposed to be sinning and, and you're actively trying to fight sin by just thinking about your sin, but then that's all you end up doing instead of talking to God and praying and asking him for help and reading the reading his word and, and using that to help you re refocus. So I think Neil has talked about those kinds of things when he's talked about fasting before. Like you don't just stop doing the one thing. It's you stop doing it and you replace it with something else. Yeah. So, and and it's, it's not exactly the same thing, but like if you just, you're like, well, I'm not thinking about heaven. It's like, well, then what are you thinking about? You're going to be thinking about other things. Yeah. Things that are certainly not, not worthwhile endeavors or you're just wasting time, which is what so many of us end up doing. It's certainly what I find myself doing more often than I'd and like. And that was, that was the big push for week one. The week one was just the, the action item was just think about heaven. Yeah. And I, 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 I framed it in the, the spiritual discipline of contemplation of just thinking like we're, we're of an age now where we're so distracted. We're forgetting how to think. We're not spending any time thinking intentionally about many things, but this deep reflective thought of the things of God is going to feed your soul much more than, uh, you know, whatever podcast you feel like you want to put in your ear and, and have distract, distract you. Yeah. And I say that as we record, as we're recording a podcast. <laughs> yep. But this is also the generation like we, we see people walking like, like people with earbuds in 24 seven. Yeah. Like even like they don't even, they're not even taken out to, to talk to people. Like you go to Starbucks and your barista is wearing headphones and, and that barrier is put between you because there, there's just a constant stream of somebody else's thought, somebody else being fed into you, into your brain. And we need to remember how to think and what to think about. And Christ says, set your, Paul says, Christ says through Paul, set your minds on the things that are above. Set your minds on eternal things. Set your minds on things that are unseen, that are forever. Because what's seen is transient, meaning it's it's temporary. It's It will fade. It's not going to last. But the word of the Lord will last forever. So that was week one. We um, we talked a little bit about the, the beatific vision, what true blessedness is. And blessedness is just, is just kind of a word for perfect happiness, this blissful uh, happiness that, that Scripture tells us we're going to have in heaven. That's what heaven is. Uh, when we have that, that pure vision of God and there's nothing between us and God, because right now there's a lot between us and God. We have, our sin is between us. Um, our, our, our dying, uh, fleshly bodies are between us and God. Our bodies aren't glorified yet. Um, our, our, our very presence in this earth where, uh, Jesus says Satan is the prince of this, of this world, uh, is between us and God. And so we, we only know God in part from what he's revealed to us. And we know, uh, through his word and through his spirit, this glimpse of him, and one day we'll know fully, and that will be our full satisfaction, um, this full blessed vision and presence of God. And that's what heaven is, being with God with no barriers. And that was my focus for week one. Um, and then week two was kind of continuing in this present age how heaven should color the, the way we think, but also the way we act. Yeah. And it was a continuation of that of that C.S. Lewis quote, uh, the people who, who have their minds focused on heaven are, are tend to be the ones that actually make the most earthly impact. 
Uh, and so I, I kind of went from thinking our, you know, our feelings and our emotions, our affections should be fully on Christ because we should want Christ fully, and Christ is the, is the center of heaven. So if we want Christ, we want heaven. And then if that's the center of our affections, that'll be the center of our actions too. And I went through the, the Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11 and, and all the heroes of the faith and how they were motivated and went through these crazy things because of their view of heaven and their focus on the things above. Um, and then, uh, um, what else did I talk about? <laughs> it's been two days. <laughs> I um, didn't hear it. I can't help you. And not then, yet. What's that? Oh, oh God, I said not yet. Um, not yet. I haven't heard it yet. Um, you talked about Homeward Bound. Yes, Homeward Bound. Okay. Um, a, a so, very uh, oh, nice. 90s movie that I used to watch. Love that one. And we knew the ending of that uh, story. Yes. So I framed it in all in the way Scripture calls us pilgrims, that we are, we're looking for a homeland, that this is our journey from point A to point B. Yeah. And we are, we're in, a middle, in the middle of that journey. Point B is heaven where we're going, and we're on a pilgrimage to get there. And so how do we how do we handle this pilgrimage properly? How do we behave in a way that that honors God and and we make the most of our pilgrimage? And I yeah, I use the the movie Homeward Bound, um, which we watched recently with my kids um, <laughs> in, the, in the van on the way to the beach. Good choice. Um, I uh, is every single one of the four going to start with the word home? Yes. Then homesick, homeward bound, home alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, Home Alone too. Home Alone too. They actually, you're, they you're actually correct. All all four of them will start with home. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm not going to tell you what they are yet. Oh, we just have to keep guessing. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, well, the first two, Homesick and Homeward Bound, like I said, were the focus on the present age. The last two will be the focus on the age to come. Um. I'll tell you. I don't really care. <laughs> oh, you can wait. We'll keep it secret. <laughs> well, really <laughs> this week is... Um... <laughs> well, everybody stopped listening when they said, stop putting earf- earbuds in <laughs> listening to podcasts. Or, I'm convicted. <laughs> I got to stop listening now. Yeah, I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, oh, yeah, talking if you're talking still about listening, bullpen. yeah, this is a little bonus <laughs> <laughs> for anyone still listening. This, uh, yeah, this, this, week this, is, this week is called Home Body, and we're going to talk oh, about... Nice. Um, we're going to talk about death and the new the new body, mm-hmm. um, and then week four is called homecoming, and we're gonna that'll be the week probably what most people thought the whole thing would be, where we just read a section of we're gonna read Revelation uh, twenty one and twenty two and just hmm. just ponder and sit in what heaven will be like and mm-hmm. the new life will be like, um, so yeah, and so the last two weeks focus more on the age to come, but. Yeah, I, I use Homeward Bound, and at the front end, I I uh, I mentioned how we go to the library to get DVDs when we go on road trips because our we do, van we do that now we don't too. have we don't buy DVDs anymore, and but our van has a DVD player, and so we'll go rent or borrow uh, DVDs from the library, and I started by saying DVDs were DVDs are little discs that used to play movies. <laughs> And <laughs> like you have to explain that to everybody. <laughs> yeah. And first service loved it. That was hilarious. It got a bigger risk. I mean, it was just a little quip. I didn't think, but it got a bigger response than I thought it would. <laughs> Second service enjoyed it too. Like they were, they enjoyed it. Third service. I said it and it got quieter than this studio. <laughs> How dumb do you think we are? <laughs> Yeah, it was, and it was, it was just, and not that I care. <laughs> it's just like the difference between the responses was just so stark. Yes, like the difference. It was like it was literally crickets, <laughs> and it's not that I care. Like the joke didn't land. It was just like, what is going? What is the What's difference? The difference. <laughs> it's the same material. Like it's the same joke. Anyway, so, those people are hungry. Yeah. <laughs> that's got to be it. Yeah. I guess. They've had more sleep, though. They've had more sleep. Maybe that's it's why it's funnier. It's time to go to brunch. brunch. Yeah. It's literally lunchtime. They're full and they're sleepy. But I use Homeward Bound as kind of my uh, my example throughout the message uh, of being this on this met, this, this journey home as the pets were. 
uh, Chance, Shadow, and Sassy. I was going to ask if you talked if you talked about them by name. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I had to give them a rundown for the people who uh who has never seen who never seen Homeward Bound. It's yeah. a good movie. Got to frame it. Um, and then and then I I at, on the at the front end I kind of I asked the question: Does it make a difference watching a movie if you know the ending? And obviously, when we watch a movie a second time, we know how it ends. It's not as suspenseful. We know we know that the pets make it home safely home. Oh, so. spoiler alert! <laughs> From nineteen ninety three. Yeah, and so which I used whole, to watch on a VHS, which is a box that you used to be able to watch movies on. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'll bet my parents still have home VHS. I'll bet they have a whole closet full of VHS still. Yeah, and uh, that's what I used to watch that movie on. Yeah, I'll bet they still have it. But I have no way to play that now. I don't have it. <laughs> they don't make vans with that. I can only do DVDs mark. in my van. <laughs> yeah. And my car doesn't do VHS, so. <laughs> Got to get that backwards compatibility. <sighs> but then the push for, if we really know the ending to the story, if we know that we're going to make it safely home, if we know there is a safe home waiting for us that God has promised to bring us to, then that'll that will impact how we behave here on this earth. If we know the ending to the story, it'll influence what we do between here and there. Courage will come easier. Things of this world that are sorrowful will be less sorrowful. Mm -hmm. Things that are joyful will be less joyful in a way that we know it's just a glimpse of what will come, which will be an ultimate joy. Not to make it less joyful in a way that's worse, but joyful in the sense that this is good, but even better is coming. And so it will drive us to to do things for Christ uh, that he has for us that, that feel hard or seem to be hard, but really the courage for it is rooted in the fact that, that we know the end of the story. We know that, that we're going to make it safely home no matter what happens. If I go and evangelize to my coworker and, and he mocks me, I know I can be of good courage because I'm going to make it safely home. All I'm doing is what Christ has told me. And and I pulled that one beatitude that says that directly. Blessed are you when people revile you or say false things about you on my account. It says, be glad and rejoice when that happens. Be glad and rejoice when people revile you. That's a shocking statement. A shocking statement. But that beatitude is, is an instruction for kingdom living. How do we live for the kingdom in the here and now? So, those are the first two weeks. Um, and my hope is that it's gotten us thinking more about heaven, thinking correctly in the sense that heaven is not just a glorification of all our earthly pleasures. It's not just the best golf course you've ever seen. It's not just the best Chipotle burrito you've ever seen. It's a focus on the center of heaven, which is Christ. And then if our center is on the focus of Christ, we are focusing on on heaven if we focus on Christ. Uh, but then also that affection and that love that we have for him will grow deeper and will will hopefully motivate us to live for Christ and have the courage to be able to live for Christ because we know we're ultimately going to be brought safely home. Yeah. That'll preach. That'll preach because thinking, will I get to wait in line for fast casual burritos <laughs> in heaven still? <laughs> Boy, I hope it's better than that. <laughs> yeah, Isaiah that's... seems to imply it's the, the choicest steak and wine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's way better than saying, hey, can I have more corn? <laughs> I mean, it does, it does say there'll be no more sickness or sadness. So. <laughs> Exactly. No more morning after when you have Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Guac won't be extra. We're breaking down the very oh, wow. uh, the, the the deepest parts of this uh, equation right now. Yeah, it's like I think I think what you one of the things that you brought up that was so um that was interesting to me is like that so much of this is not about you know part part of it is about where we're going but but we want to think about how we think about that here on this earth. And how that will change our change our our mindset and change how we go about doing things, but like all the things that we think about are the things that are here, mm-hmm. and it's and it's hard not to. Um, 
but yeah, ch- ch- taking a chance and changing your, your frame of reference and thinking about things that you haven't thought about before. It can be really, really powerful. Yeah. And helpful. That'll preach. Well, <laughs> just, just commentary <laughs> on, on yours, but so, uh, yeah, that's the first two weeks, the first half, uh, we'll have two more, uh, this week is homebody. We're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about death a little bit mm. and the, the, the doorway to heaven, so to speak. Um, and then the new body and the new creation and what that'll look like. Um, and then, yeah, then the final week we'll, we'll really focus, spend a week just focusing, uh, focusing on heaven and, uh, the next, the age to come. Do you think this, this is what I've, I don't know if I'm still here, but when I started thinking about heaven was like, cause you just talked about your body that you're going to be in like your prime body and how Jesus probably died at 33. I was like, are we all going to be <laughs> like 33? Yeah, what are we going to look like? Are we going to look the same? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are we going to look like us? Yeah. All these things, all these questions that we have that we don't, we I'm don't gonna really touch on know. That. Yeah. So yeah, maybe we'll get into that in the next podcast we do. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we'll do it next. We kind of talked about doing two podcasts mm-hmm. during the series, one for the first two and then one for the second two. Yeah. So maybe we'll follow up. We'll follow up on that and. Okay. In two weeks. Well, there's my question I'm submitting to the podcast. There we go. To which I will also answer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if I answer it on Sunday because I am I am going down that road. So. Yeah. And then don't ask it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no follow The answer's there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just listen. <laughs> uh, will I see the multiversal versions of myself? <laughs> <laughs> science chad and, uh, science, yes, science yeah. chad i'd yeah. say i almost said sports chad <laughs> there was uh, definitely be a sports zach there there yeah that was definitely Which, a multi, zach multiverse will, would not, sports zach does not sports exist zach. in this universe <laughs> pastor zach will meet sports zach <laughs> <laughs> pastor who when i said bullpen immediately thought of a farm <laughs> hey it's my background my grandpa my grandpa and grandma had a farm <laughs> my dad grew up on a farm <laughs> There we go. All it's right. my it's my history. It's Fair my enough. people. Fair enough. Will there <laughs> be sports in heaven? Well, it's, it's good to be called out of the bullpen for this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be herded back in shortly after. <laughs> It'll put you back in. Hey, at least we'll I get a sack weeks. of oats. Looking forward to that. Mm, yeah. It's gonna be really sick. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you have any other questions that you would like to submit? Oh, um, no, we kind of talked about all the ones that I that I was thinking of, and I'll have I'll have more as we as we talk. I'm one I'm one where it's like, I <laughs> it's hard for me not to talk as soon as things come up, um, but then sometimes I lose them. So maybe it'll come back around, and <laughs> I'll I'll submit my own question to the podcast through the through the email, the email. or uh, via text, oh, which yeah. you can do. So how can you submit questions to the podcast? No one knows. <laughs> okay, you can do it through email, podcast at hopechristianchurch.com, and you can text to, I don't really remember the number. Is it Hope? Mm. Hope 222. Two, 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 two. Two. It Yeah, 440, Hope, hope 222. Two, two, two. Yeah. Shows how much I listen by the end. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> Missed the whole 440. <laughs> You're going to want to text 440 HOPE 222. It is. Whatever your question is. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you for listening. Um, submit your questions. And uh, we'll see you when we see you. See you, homebodies. Bye bye. See you.